Happy Chusa. Say to your neighbors again, Happy Chusa. It's a beautiful day. We, we are so blessed by having this beautiful weather, such a tender and soft wind, what a fresh air. It's a beautiful day. As we close the holiday season, the Chuseok holidays, I want again to invite all of you to the wilderness, particularly Jesus staying, standing in the wilderness. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Then to escape Herod's persecution, fled to Egypt. After settling down in Nazareth and spending his youth there, when the time came, he went out to be baptized by John the Baptist. And now he set out towards the wilderness to prepare for, his, for him to be a minister to do his public ministry on this earth. So we can say the wilderness was the place for Jesus to be called in the world as the Son of God and to hear the Word of God. You and I in our lives as Christians come upon two types of roads where we have to make important decisions. One is the broad and easy path of the flesh, while the other is the narrow, difficult, and spiritual path. We tend to choose the fast, beautiful, outstanding, conspicuous, and attractive road. However, the Bible continuously talks to us and invites us to choose the path that God desires, the road of life. For it is written in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. So that the question came to my mind is that whether we are Christian or not, it's not the matter. To be a true disciple, to be a true Christian, we need to ask another question. Whether we are taking the road of life or the, life, uh, or the road of destruction. In today's passage, we see Jesus going to the wilderness right after his baptism by John the Baptist. In Matthew chapter 4, 1 and 2, it says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and nights, and afterwards he was famished. From time to time, we complain in our life journey why we are left in the wilderness. However, when we look in the scripture, we see that the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ was in the wilderness before any of us was in the wilderness. Jesus was already in the wilderness. In the wilderness, our Lord faced the temptation from Satan. Satan, the devil, did not deny that Jesus was the Son of God, but rather he sought to tempt Jesus to not 
take the difficult path, but rather go the easy road. Amongst the sermons of John Wesley, he says in his sermon, the faith of the devil is a faith that knows that Jesus is the Son of God. Knowledge is okay. We know that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that you are the Son of God. So don't take the difficult path. Don't take the cross. But rather, take the easy one. That is how Jesus was tempted. Here are the voices from Satan. Jesus, be the Messiah that solves people's hunger by turning stones into bread. Jesus, be the Messiah that shows the miracle of jumping off the temple and being protected by angels, thereby being held by the crowds below. Hi, Jesus, be the Messiah that reigns over all of creation and freely exercises your authority. You are the Son of God. Show it. And show your authority and power. Use it. Yet, don't bear the cross. The temptations of a Satan appear to be intelligent and very attractive. Yet, the Lord says, deny yourself and take on your own cross. To those seeking wisdom and power, the cross may be an obstacle. Yet to those who take it, it's the path towards victory and salvation. So St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, it says, Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jesus and fullness, foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Then what kind of a place was the wilderness that Jesus went out? First, I believe the wilderness is the place to experience God for Jesus. The church fathers who went out into the desert, they trained themselves to get rid of their desires of the flesh in such harsh living conditions. Enduring through flaming and freezing temperatures with meager food rations, they focused on reading listening to and meditating on the Word of God. The reason they sought out the desert was solely to focus on God and God alone. As we have read as a text in the Old Testament, Moses experienced the God in the wilderness in the form of the inextinguishable flame. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. Upon observing the burning bush, he realized he himself was like mere shrubbery. His life was like the kindling that caught on fire quickly and burnt away to ashes like an existence that brought pain rather than joy to others. Yet, if lit by God, he realized his fire would never be put out 
and he would actually come to be. Second, I learned that wilderness for Jesus is the place where the Word of God is a present. In, number, in Numbers chapter 3, verse 14, it is written, Then the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. And John the Baptist also heard the word in the wilderness and went on to declare the word in the wilderness. Then the people went out to the wilderness to hear the word of John the Baptist. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. You and I, when we encounter the wilderness in our lives, we begin to hear the voice of God. When we are in the wilderness, the noisy voices in the world became small and smaller. But the voice of God became bigger and clearer. It is a place. It is a place to hear the voice of God of a different dimensions from what we have heard so far. It is a place to hear small, soft, tender, delicate voices as well. Third, in the wilderness, Jesus alone to obey to the Father. As we can imagine, the wilderness is a place of nothingness. No water, no sound. It is a place to experience a dearth and shortage and life and death. The Israelites directed all of their disdain and complaint toward Moses and Aaron during their time in the wilderness. This was also their complaint towards God and caused them to become a disobedient people. Why? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to bring us to this wretched place? It is no place for grain, nor figs, nor vines, nor farmer grapes, and there is no water to drink. They complain and complain. You know, disobedience and obedience are only the differences in perspective. Disobedience is disbelief, which sees only what does not exist. On the other hand, obedience is a belief that can see what does exist. See in the wilderness where the Israelites roamed, there lie the word of God. There the guidance of God as well. And manna and quail and the streams from the stones also were there. The wilderness was allowed by God it was a part of God's plan. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandment. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The cloth on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Isn't it a miracle? For forty years, the clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. How powerfully God protected them. How delicately God protected them. God drove the Israelites out into the wilderness to train them to be obedient. In the wilderness of our own lives, we need to be able to see the will of God beyond our pain. It is easy for us to complain. But when you go deeper into the wilderness and meditate on it, we can find the will of God, even in a time of a trial, even in a time of a pain and suffering. In the trials of the wilderness, it is the word of God that declares we can emerge victorious. Now listen how Jesus responded to the tempter, Satan. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Again, Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And finally, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Indeed, the word of God is a living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing until it divides us all from spirit, joint from marrow. It is also to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Why did the people go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? Someone dressed in soft robes? No. They went out to see the prophet speaking the word of God. They went out to listen to the word of God. In the moment of this season, while enduring the pains of encountering the wilderness of our lives, purse and slowly extend your ear to the Lord. Then you can hear the word of God. The wilderness is not a place to sprint. It's not a place to run fast, but a place to purse and slowly work while listening to the word of God, while bearing your burdens and your crows on your shoulders. The wilderness is the place the Lord grant us to solemnly bear our burdens and learn how to be obedient. It is also the place to experience the miracle of the Lord feeding and clothing us. The more amazing I learn that, Rather than I'm trying to do something else, I learn to listen and see how God is working in our lives, in my life, and in the things that we are struggling with. As the sons and daughters of God, learn this wisdom. Sometimes we can try our best but sometimes we need 
Stop there and see how God is working on you. Purse and take a rest and take a deep breath and listen and see how and what God is talking to you and how and what God is working for you. Rely solely on the Lord and root yourself down deeply in the Word of God and go deeper into the wilderness. Just as the Lord did overcome and emerge victorious over the trials of the wilderness by the Word of God, I pray and wish all of you you enjoy the peace of the Lord overflowing within you and through your life journey. Amen.